Today's video celebrates the memory of one of the most influential people in modern Indian history, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam. In this video, we're going to be looking at one of the most influential Indian men of the past century and someone who throughout the course of his life was recognised as one of the great leaders of modern India. Dr. Kalam was an aerospace scientist who served as the 11th President of India in 2002 through to 2007. Born and raised in Tamil Nadu, he studied physics and aerospace engineering when young. Though not considered a particularly gifted student at the time, he was recognised for his work ethic and focus during his time as a student. After his education finished, he spent the next four decades as a scientist and a science administrator, mainly at the Defence Research and Development Organisation and Indian Space Research Organisation. Being closely involved in India's civilian space programme and military missile development efforts. From his work, he became known as the Missile Man of India for his development of the ballistic missiles and launch vehicle technology. He also played a pivotal organisational, technical and political role in India's Pokhran II nuclear tests in 1998, the first since the original nuclear test by India in 1974. In 2002, Dr Kalam was elected the 11th President of India with both the support of the ruling BJP party and the opposition Indian National Congress. For this reason, he was recognised as the People's President, following which he returned to his life of education, writing and public service after a single term. He has been the recipient of several prestigious awards, including the Bharat Ratna, India's highest civilian honour. For all that he has accomplished in his incredible life, Dr Kalam takes most pride in being recognised as a teacher, a position he considers a great responsibility, citing how one of his teachers at school inspired him as a student to achieve all that he went on to during his life. And this is precisely where I would like to focus today's message. Dr Kalam is one of the great modern teachers and thinkers in India, taking the responsibility of a nation on his shoulders and yet remaining grounded and humble throughout his life, making him a phenomenal leader in the nation. He learnt about responsibility and leadership at a very specific point in his life, in 1979, during the first Indian satellite launch vehicle. Dr Kalam was the project director of SLV mission working with Professor Satish Dhawan, who was the chairman of the ISRO at the time, where Dr Kalam was employed. This project was the first time India had attempted to build a rocket launch vehicle. After 10 years of work, the team were ready to launch their first experimental rocket called the Rohini Technology Payload on August 10, 1979. As the countdown began, Dr Kalam, along with six other experts, monitored the launch. With four minutes left before the satellite launch, computer algorithms began to go through the checklist of items that they needed to be checked. After a minute of checks, the algorithm put the launch on hold, as it showed that some of the control components were not in order. With all involved and certain on how to proceed, Dr Kalam looked at the experts supporting him to understand the scope of the problem. The experts did their checks and advised Dr Kalam go ahead with the launch, as they were confident about their calculations, believing that the issue wasn't likely to interfere. Dr Kalam, being the head of the project, had to take the decision on whether to bypass the automated process and switch to the manual process to launch the rocket. He chose to trust his advisors and push the launch ahead. In the first stage, as the rocket began its ascent, all seemed well. However, during the latter stage, a problem came to pass and instead of the satellite going into orbit, the whole rocket system plunged into the Bay of Bengal, a major failure for all involved. The whole world's media was waiting for the press meet, with questions surrounding the failed launch. Dr Kalam was resting in his room after exhaustion from work, aware he would be responsible for all that had happened. It was at this point that Professor Dhawan, the chairman of the ISRO, came to Dr Kalam and called him to join him at the press meet. As Professor Dhawan and Dr Kalam sat in front of the world's press, Professor Dhawan announced that we failed, but I have a very good trust in my team that next time we will be succeeding for sure. 
The stunned Dr. Kalam listened to the professor's words as the chairman took full and complete responsibility for the teams and specifically Dr. Kalam's failed attempt. A year passed and on 18th July 1980, the same team led by Dr. Kalam successfully launched Rohini RS-1 into orbit. This moment was a major source of pride for the whole of the nation as the country celebrated the success. It was following the launch Dr. Kalam got his next great lesson. Professor Dhawan congratulated Dr. Kalam and the team and asked Dr. Kalam to conduct the press conference himself that day. Dr. Kalam did as told and went on to have a great career in both science and politics, as well as many other outstanding endeavours. However, Dr. Kalam cites the lesson he learnt about leadership from Professor Dhawan as two of the most important lessons of his life, not learnt in school or in university, but from a man he admired in his career. Now if you're enjoying this video please leave a like, share this with friends and family and subscribe for more content like this. Don't forget to hit the bell icon as otherwise YouTube may not notify you of the latest uploads. To continue, the two great lessons Dr. Kalam learnt were Number 1. In the face of failure, Professor Dhawan took responsibility. A leader is the first to come forward in the face of adversity and this is precisely what Professor Dhawan did during the failed launch in 1979. It's important to remember that at this point India was a young nation, one that was still trying to recover from being under the rule of the British Empire and then partition with other nations, notably Pakistan. During this time, many were questioning the spending on projects such as satellite launches, where they felt money could have been much better utilised for the development of the country. This makes Professor Devan's actions in 1979 all the more admirable, as he didn't just have to explain the reasons for the failed launch, but also had to face a backlash of people questioning the very project itself. Number 2. In times of success, Professor Devan gave the limelight to his team. In 1980, when the team successfully launched a satellite into space, Professor Devan didn't need to get applauded. Instead, he took a step back and let his team, the people who had struggled all that time for that moment, step forward and enjoy the celebrations. His humility at this moment and importantly his understanding of leadership led him to give Dr. Kalam his next great life lesson. A true leader knows when to come forward to protect their team, but a great leader can equally take a step back to let their team enjoy a success, always keeping in mind that their role as a leader is to work for the good of those that they lead. Professor Dhawan was an incredible example in Dr. Kalam's life, and just as Dr. Kalam's teacher in school inspired his ambition in life, Professor Dhawan helped him mature into the leader he became. Dr. Abdul Kalam is one of the most influential Indians in history, a person who is admired and loved by over a billion people, and someone whose death was mourned as though the nation had lost its father. His influence reaches far beyond the borders of a nation to the greater world. However, just as we remember Dr. Kalam, we should also remember the man who protected him in his time of need, and stood behind him in his time of joy his leader, Professor Satish Dhawan. My mission is to put the satellite in the orbit. Thousands of people work nearly 10 years. The decision, I bypassed the computer, I launched the system. Okay, I launched the system. This fellow went, first stage worked with a four stage rocket and second stage got mad. It went to the spin. Instead of putting the satellite in the orbit, it put in the Bay of Bengal. Press was meeting there like this number of people, world press, with photos, this and that, all the gadget they are there. I was really frightened I will be the culprit <laughs> because I'm the project director, mission director. What Satish Dhawan said, chairman, Indian Space Research Organization said, Dear friends, we have failed today. We is the first time I have to do all the success, all the failure is. Uh, I want to support my technologists and scientists and staff so that next year they succeed. So he took the whole blame himself. And then media asked, you have put Bay of Bengal so many crores, you have put it like that, lot of criticism. He received the criticism, 
he assured them in a year we will succeed with our team, it's a very good team. Next year, here only interesting happened, next year, July 18, 1980, when he succeeded, Professor Dhawan said, you go and conduct the press conference. Do you follow <laughs> what it means? <laughs> it means when the failure occurred, the leader took it up. When the success came, he gives to his team. That's the first time. Are you aware of Dr. Kalam or this story? Let me know in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed this, please leave a like, share this with friends and subscribe for more like this. Don't forget to hit the bell icon as otherwise YouTube may not notify you of the latest uploads.